what is up? I'm Melissa McCack from Room 51, and this is Teach the Teach 101 on the Dice Tower, where I teach you general tips and tricks on how to teach board games. And in this video, well, actually, I think I'm going to be doing a mini video series of four videos, and I want to walk through each of the three different kinds of learners and how to teach them uh, board games. So there's the kinesthetic learners, there's the auditory learners, and the visual learners. And then, so each video, I'm going to break apart each of these different types of learners and then my fourth video will be how to teach um, board games when you have all different kinds of learners in the group. Now is teaching board games really all that serious? Probably not, but I thought it would be interesting, fun, and cool to go through, and it could uh, be pretty helpful when teaching different kinds of learners. Now before I get into things, I want to give a huge shout out to Sabrina the Teenage Meeple who is also from Room 51. She is going for her education degree, and she helped me compile this information and research and everything, uh, that way I could convey the message to you, which is really awesome, so thank you, Sabrina. All right, so for this video, I'm going to be talking about kinesthetic learners. These are the types of people who are like the doers. They want visuals. They want to touch the pieces and everything. So for them, you usually want to, um, and by the way, I'm going to be using the board game Scythe as uh, the example for each of these videos. That way I could show you, this is how you teach a kinesthetic learner, and this is how you teach the audio, and blah, 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 blah. So for the kinesthetic learner, what I really like to do is have them actually set up their own play area. So for example, in Scythe, when everybody has their own little like leaderboards and their faction boards and everything, and you have all these different cubes and uh, the monuments and all that stuff, I actually have everybody, I walk them through like, okay, these are the uh, upgrade cubes. They're going to go here along these um, indents or whatever. Uh, and then just walking them through how to actually set up their player board while kind of explaining a little bit like, this is what this thing is, and this is where it goes, which I think gets people kind of into the game off the bat, but also for those kinesthetic learners, they get to do things, which is what they want to do, right? And, and this is where, like, they start to learn, like, okay, this is what this piece is for, and blah, 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 right? Um, and it keeps them engaged and involved in the learning process. They also like pictures, so when you are explaining different things, it is important to actually point to these things on the board, right? Like, so, for example, with the scythe again, it's like, okay, you can't walk through the river unless you have that ability and you're actually uh, touching the river uh, on the board, right? Showing them this is what it looks like. And maybe you're actually moving the mech, right? To show them like, hey, if I, I can't move the mech um, if they don't have that special ability and then pointing to them on the board, uh, what gives them that special ability to go across rivers or lakes? No, it's rivers. Yes. Sometimes for kinesthetic learners too, they like to play a full round before actually getting into it. They're like, all right, all right, that's cool and all, but like, can we just like practice a little bit? Like, let's just play around and you know, that way I could figure this out. I personally hate doing that. I really don't like playing around first and then resetting everything. I'm like, no, let's just keep going. Um, so I'm not so great with uh, the, the type of learners who need that. I'm usually like, yeah, 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 well, we'll just do one round and then we do the round and I'm like, you think maybe we could just kind of continue. I'm not a perfect teacher, but uh, that that's most of, so that's also something to keep in mind as a teacher, like what do you like to do? If you don't like doing that, don't do it because then, you know, it's, people could feel if you're not enjoying the way you're teaching. If you are enjoying the way you're teaching, it is contagious, okay? People will then also enjoy the process usually, right? Uh, some people get mad at me, uh, they're like, well, why won't you do this thing? It's like, because I hate it. So anyway, but those are the kinesthetic learners usually. So if you're totally cool with that, they usually like to maybe play around uh, first and then reset everything and go over it again. Because again, they're the doers. They want to touch things. They want to figure out how everything works. And then you could get into the actual game. And that's really it for this video. That is kinesthetic learners. For my next video, I'm going to go into visual learners because there's um, some similarities between the two, but I'm going to explain the differences in my next video. So stay tuned for that. Thank you so much for watching. Please let me know down below in the comments if you have any questions or uh, if you have any thoughts on how to teach kinesthetic learners. I would love to know. I will catch you next time.